I am a sucker for an interesting looking industrial development just off the Eastern Avenue. And there's one there. And oh my word, what an absolute beauty. I've never actually seen this before. Look at this. It says Woodcraft Showroom, but I wonder what it was originally. Isn't that magnificent? Not even really part of the walk, just passing it on the way to the start. It's things like that that I absolutely love because they're windows into a time with a very different sensibility. That's just a kind of very functional industrial building here on the Eastern Avenue. Just, well, we're heading towards Chadwell Heath, or we're sort of in Chadwell Heath. Very functional thing, like today it would be a very cheaply constructed, very generic type building, but there, it's a thing of great beauty. It was probably built, what, in the 20s or 30s? It's just a real, it's like an artwork. I love things like that. Anyway, um, <laughs> that is not what the video is about. I think I'll introduce it a little bit further along off the Eastern Avenue. So we're out here in Chadwell Heath, right out east in the London Borough of Barking and Dagenham to finally walk the entire course of the Maze Brook, another of the tributaries of the River Roding. I've walked a few of them over the last couple of years, starting with the Cranbrook, which is an amazing walk. And then we walked the Locksford Water and the Seven Kings Water. These are tributaries of the sort of lower end of the roading. And I'd like to walk, you know, as many as I can, really. Um, so the Maze Brook is, is one that we can walk above ground for at least part of its way. Um, and we're going to find the source of it just up here in this nest of streets, just, um, just north of St Chad's Park. I should say I'm using... Um, I'm being guided really by some uh, notes I took from the brilliant, the essential Lund uh, Diamond Geezer blog, which has got to be the most complete London blog. If you're looking for a complete directory of places and walks and rivers and all sorts of stuff about London, you can't go any, you can't get any better than Diamond Geezer. So thanks, Diamond Geezer, in advance taking the directions from your blog post of the walk you did in 2015 and I hope I can do it justice. Now, where am I going? Portland Gardens. I've got to go down here and then I've got to weave around the streets to find the source. So I think this little alleyway here could take us directly to the source. Exciting. So this little uh, what he calls a turning circle at the end of Chadville Gardens is where Diamond Giza says the, uh, the Maze Brook rises. I mean, there's no sign of it here, but apparently you can see the course of it in the park there, St Chad's Park, which is where we're going next. St Chad is an interesting character to come across on a river walk, isn't he? He was uh, born in Northumbria in the seventh century and he's kind of one of the sort of most important figures in Anglo-Saxon Christianity. We know a lot more about him than we would uh, some other figures because he's written about a lot by the Venerable Bede. Where would he be without the Venerable Bede? But he becomes Bishop of the Northumbrians in the seventh century. I put his dates, he was born and died on the screen. And then he's kind of credited really with expanding Christianity in the Kingdom of Mercia. He's invited to become the Bishop of Mercia, I think in 669. And before that, Penda, King Penda, had allowed Christianity into Mercia, although he himself remained pagan. There's the brilliant film Penda's Fen, which I highly recommend, that has King Penda as a kind of character in it, important figures. And apparently, St. Chad, well, Chad became a saint almost as soon as he died. I don't think he met any terrible gory end, although I shall look that up when I get home, but I can't see it in my brief skim reading. And his relics still exist, and they're in the altar of um, St Chad's Cathedral in Birmingham, which I think is a relatively modern cathedral, Victorian, and they're embedded in the altar. And they were actually carbon dated um, by an Oxford academic and dated to the 7th century. There's some of his bones. So I think the church recognises them as true relics of a saint. Isn't that amazing? It's also interesting as well that he's recognised as a saint 
in a number of Christian denominations. So he's a proper saint. What I don't know is his relationship to this area out here. I have looked it up before, so it'll be in a, an, old, an old, old video where I walk through this park on the way to some Second World War um, locations a little bit further north of here. But it's good to run into an Anglo-Saxon saint at the beginning of our walk. It bodes well for the journey ahead. So you can see the land falling away just on the other side of these trees here. So I would think that's the course of the river. Diamond Geezer does indicate something along those lines. And he notes that this is the border between Barking and Dagenham and Redbridge. And rivers would have once been used as borders. Rivers and ditches, that kind of thing, were often used as borders. I was doing a talk to the um, Wanstead Women's Institute the other night about some of the rivers in the area. It was mostly around Waltham Forest. And it really, uh, again, even as I'm doing the talk, it reminds me of why I love this activity of hunting for lost rivers, or in this case, a semi-lost, not lost river. So much is because it's this secret in the landscape, this occluded thing, this living thread running through the built environment. You know, just tug it and it releases stories before your very eyes. I get a real thrill out of it. So I would say the river's running along that um, alleyway there that runs adjacent to the park. Diamond Giza does mention Jarrow Road, which is running parallel to there. But we can't get out there, so I'm going to continue on through the park and pick it up on the other side. This is what happens when you do lost river walks. You're always zigzagging, or even river walks, actually, for the built environment. You can't just stick doggedly to the course. So walking along Chadwell Heath Lane here, you can see the really clear low point, just the other side of the traffic lights there. And that must be where the river crosses the road, beneath the ground there. We'll now go down Roxy Avenue, which I wonder if that's named after the, the famous venue on Sunset Strip. I've actually worked there. Or it could just be short for Roxanne, who knows. My guess is that the river's running behind the houses to the left, based on the crossing point where it crosses Chadwell Heath Lane, and uh, yeah, where, where the river could actually flow. I find something really sort of warm and optimistic about these eastern suburbs. These are real sort of post-war homes for heroes, you know, building a new future for the nation. We continue now along Grove Road. We will see water at some point in the moment. It's quite a bleak, isn't it? Apparently there is a small tributary that joins uh, the Maysbrook near the ends of Roxy Avenue, but you can't see it, although it is above ground, if you know what I mean. Look at this amazing building here, the Grove Social Club. What a real beauty. It's the second one on our walk today. The Maysbrook is the giver of great architecture. So this um, Metropolitan Police Operations HQ here apparently is built over the course of the river. I can't believe Ben Aronovich hasn't included this in a Rivers of London book. I'm sure that is bound to change. And this harvester here on the high road is uh, built over the river and is looking incredibly tempting. A good justify going inside in order, I guess, to sort of say I'm looking for the river, maybe. Well, I'm having this pint as close as I can get to the Maysbrook, which is just to the left of my pint glass behind these trees. That was a, a lovely, worthwhile, necessary stop in the Chadwell Heath Harvester, right beside the Maysbrook, which I believe must be running down this alleyway here. Sometimes I'm thinking now I'm dividing the videos up into seasons. This is now the start of season five. YouTube, YouTube mate. Hello, YouTube. How you doing? Feel good gardens. Feel good gardens, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> and um, if I divide them up into feel good gardens, go and check out feel good gardens. I'll see if I can find a link to that. But now I'm like dividing the, the videos into seasons. Sometimes I think, is there going to be a theme to the season? 
And season four seemed to be like a season about of community. A lot of those walks I did with other people. Um, I think actually, was it five? Five of the six videos were with other people, or certainly four of the six. So I've already shot two videos for this season. Paris and Sharpenhoe, and now this is number three. I've stopped for a pint in all of them now. So maybe that's the theme of season five, stopping for a pint on the walks. <laughs> right, I've got to uh, go up this, uh, up these stairs and over this footbridge over the railway. <laughs> Good view of some of the terrain ahead. Diamond Geezer does mention Mayfield School here, with it, which obviously has a nod to the, to the name of the brook. And I think it was being built when he went through here in 2015, which incidentally is when I made a video about Maysbrook Park. So we were knocking around here roughly the same time. And onwards down this alleyway here. It's funny, isn't it? Because when you walk down this little lane here, this is the continuation of the alleyway near Mayfield Leisure Centre and the school. You can imagine this as a country lane, can't you? With a little babbling brook running alongside it. So that little footpath, which more or less follows the course of the river, brings us out here onto a parade of shops called Brooks Parade. as a direct reference to the name of the brook, or the presence of the brook anyway. Isn't that delightful? And then we're going to cross the road here, straight into Good Maze Park, where we will encounter some water. I'm not sure it's the Maze Brook, but it's some water on the course of the Maze Brook, so that'll do. It's not on the course of the walk, but looking along there, it's a great parade of shops, isn't it, here at Good Maze. It's a kind of classic suburban parade. There'll be all sorts of things down there, chippy, various kebab shops, cafes, greasy spoons, all that kind of thing. Everything you could ever possibly want will be along that strip of shops. And these are classic old iron park gates here that you see around London. Proper bits of solid iron from, uh, what does it say? Hill and Smith on Brearley Hill. These are great. Good Maze Park. What a glorious start to our first sighting of water. Look at this massive expanse here. It is on the course of the Maze Brook, according to Simon Geezer, so it must be drawing from the Maze Brook. And you saw this as well on the other walks we did along the Cranbrook and the Loxford Water and the Seven Kings Walk. They did feed a number of uh, lakes and ponds in public parks. Good Maze is a classic kind of late Victorian Edwardian development which at the time would have been in Essex and then absorbed into Greater London in 1965 with the Local Government Act. Today it's in the London Borough of Redbridge. I do love the London Borough of Redbridge, it's just got such a feel to it. It's a great borough for walking. go across this recreation ground here, Good Maze Recreation Ground or Orchard Playing Fields as they've rebranded it I think. And then, and then hold your breath, we see the actual waters of the Maze Brook running above ground. Gonna, that river's going to be like an oasis in a desert isn't it when you look at the the parched earth of these parks now, this dry summer. It's only 27 degrees today. <laughs> it's the uh, end of the week where we had the heat wave, you know, the, the 41, 42 degrees, whatever it was. I think we need a little bit of rain. This is the uh, Parkside Community Centre, a bit of great well it's sort of pebble dashed modernism isn't it really i think that risen wasn't originally like that i think it was probably originally a kind of whitewashed building a bit like the community club we saw back further back on the walk but uh at some point i'd say the 1980s they pebble dashed it 
Right, so we're going to get our first sighting of actual river just up here on the left in Maysbrook Park. And I'm more excited than you can probably imagine. Not possibly imagine, but probably imagine. Waterside close is a bit of a giveaway. And here, just through the gates, we get our first view of the actual Maysbrook. You can see it emerging from its concrete culvert on the left and entering this newly created channel that was created not long before Diamond Geyser came here in 2015. This is a great example of what they call daylighting, of bringing the river back to the surface. And here it is, Maysbrook Park, which is a really, really delightful park. And I haven't actually been up to this, this northern end of it. It's a mile long. It's a decent expanse of parkland. So Maysbrook Park was built to service uh, the enormous Beckentree Estate. I think it was built in the 1930s. And the Beckentree Estate is another one of those which claims to be the largest housing, social housing development in Europe. It certainly is a vast, vast area. And I think it's just been, it's just been a big celebration actually about the Beckentree Estate. If it isn't happening this year, it happened last year. <laughs> I know they got in touch about doing something and I was going to do a walk and I don't know what happened. <laughs> I probably forgot to reply to an email. But it really is a beautiful park and I think Beckentree has been the subject of uh, study and I think there's some Radio 4 documentaries about it and all that. I think Will Self has written about it. It's an interesting place. It's an interesting case study. A bit like, you know, looping back to the idea of optimism that I spoke about near the beginning. Hope lies in the east. I remember thinking when I made a lot of journeys out here about seven, eight years ago. And here's the Maze Brook in its little concrete channel. If you see a river running free along grassy riverbanks, you kind of feel a bit affronted by the concrete culverts. But when a river's been underground and then suddenly you see it in a culvert, you feel grateful, don't you? I think there's a life lesson there somewhere. The river's quite overgrown here, but at least it's good to see it teeming with life. You just imagine all the insects and other little creatures that can make a home down there. I made a short video just about Maysbrook Park, about 2015 I think it was, in my, uh, in my school run years. <laughs> I just jumped on a bus from Leighton Stone and hopped off and ended up in here and made a little sort of five minute video. I'll link to that below. One of the things that came up in the comments on that video was that the Roundhouse Pub, which I can't remember whether I showed it or not, but it's just on the other side of the park there. So we won't go that way because we're going to stick to the river. But that is apparently was a real legendary kind of rock venue. That sort of when bands start touring and you had these pubs with big rooms either out the back or upstairs, like the uh, Red Line in Leytonstone, where you had great bands playing when they were just starting out. And I think among the bands to play there were the Rolling Stones. Someone said their dad had seen the Rolling Stones at the Roundhouse here at Maysbrook Park, <laughs> which is amazing, isn't it? I think a load of other bands played there as well. Off the top of my head, I'm going to guess it was people like, I bet Pink Floyd played there. And others. <laughs> Sex Pistols, I reckon Morrissey played there. The Smiths, that kind of thing, you know. And here's the Maysbrook free of its culvert. So when you see rivers being brought back to the surface, like, like this here, daylighting it's called, you do wonder why it's not done more extensively. A section of the uh, Higham Hillbrook is being daylighted, just near Black Horse Lane in Walthamstow. There's a really lovely boating lake here. I think there's also a, a canoeing club based at the, at the park here who use these waters. It's in a magnificent park. It really is a real gem that you probably wouldn't know was here unless you lived in the area. I think the brook is just the other side of that fence in that dense undergrowth. So I'm not sure if we get another view of it on this side of the park, but we will see it, I think, between here and Barking. Here's another beautiful view of the Maze Brook. Just before we leave it for a short distance, and we're going to have to loop around outside the park, and we'll pick it up on the other side of the uh, of the tube tracks. The Upney Fish Bar. That is a good chippy. I remember getting some uh, chips. I can't remember what I had with the chips, and taking them 
to Maysbrook Park and eat them there. And I'm pretty sure I came back here another time as well. So solid chippy, yep, me fish bar. Up near Tube Station, way out here on the district line, quite close to the end. Not far to go now, till the Maysbrook makes its confluence with the roading down at Barking. This is the final stretch. These flats here, just near Upney Tube, have got something interesting going on, haven't they? I'm not sure what it is, but they've got a little bit of magic about them. Here's the Maze Brook here. You can see, look, there's flood defences. I think we can walk down beside it, although it's not technically a footpath. It is accessible. I hope I can get out at the other end. It's been a real walk of contrasts, and there's something about this, something almost quite magical about this little stretch here, just before we hit the edge of Barking and plunge into the industrial fringe. So this section here is actually completely inaccessible. The gate is totally locked. You can see here that they've created a sort of marshland environment here. This is managed by the Environment Agency. It's probably some sort of flood defense system. I think I can get through an alleyway into that street without having to completely double back on myself. So it looks like I will have to completely double back on myself, but that's not the end of the world. So actually coming back to the road here, you can see, look, Brook Court right next to the river. Another reference. Always gives me a little bit of a thrill. I don't really mind kind of diversions like that because I feel like that's completely necessary. There was no alternative there. I saw an open stretch of the river because I don't think we see that much more of it. I think we get one more view, maybe two, if we're lucky. So I had to take it even if it means doubling back. But what's frustrating was that the other side of that patch of kind of flood plain they created, that's the continuation. Now I have to go all the way out and around to get back to that point. It's a little bit frustrating. I think we could, I don't know if it's a bit too late because it's about quarter past seven, but there's an Elizabethan manor house just in this housing estate here. Wow, this is absolutely incredible. This is Eastbury Manor House, which was built in the 1570s by Clement Sisley. It's during the reign of Elizabeth I, and he was a wealthy merchant. And Wikipedia speculates that this was possibly or probably the first brick building in this area. It is absolutely beautiful, isn't it? It's not what I was expecting, I must admit. I've heard of Eastbury Manor, but I didn't expect to see something this, this large and this grand. Just sat here in this very kind of nondescript, you know, ordinary barking estate. And there's this grand Elizabethan manor house plonked just right here. Well, I mean, it hasn't been plonked here. The estate's grown up around it, but what an absolute gem. More intriguing architecture on the course of the Maysbrook. I think this is a church, well, I can see a cross on the top. It is a very interesting one, isn't it? A kind of round tower there. All right, I'm just going to cross the railway line on this footbridge here. And then I think not long after that, we get our final view of the Maysbrook just before it makes this confluence with the roading. This has got, I've crossed this bridge a couple of times before, I think during 2020. I will say from a purely personal point of view, one of the nicest things about this walk today is that it's taking me back to those lockdown walks of 2020 when I didn't use public transport, so I had to walk wherever I could get to and back without traveling by any public transport. And I did a lot of walks out east, out this way. That's when I did the Cranbrook and the um, and the Loxford Water and the Seven Kings Water and various other walks walked out to Barking along following the overground. So I came through here a few times that year, walked down to Barking, turn around and walk a different route home and this bridge here played a role. The A13, Billy Bragg's trunk road to the sea. And here we have the Maysbrook once more, not far from its confluence with the roading now. 
I see it's running under the road there. I think we can see it on the other side of the road and then after that I don't think it's accessible anymore. This is River Road. You can actually see the flood barrier at the end of the river roading down there. So this is where the, the roading makes its confluence with the Thames, just down the end of this road. I'll link you to the videos I've done that walk through this area here. I've walked down River Road before and on the other side. And here is the final section of the Mays Brook before it makes its confluence with the roading just down there. A venerated spot, the confluence of two rivers where votive offerings would have been made in the deep past. And this point here marks the end of our walk, which looks like good timing because it's just starting to rain very gently. Wow, what a cracking walk that was. You can't beat a bit of uh, East London river hunting. I love river hunting everywhere, but it has a special connection for me being over here in the eastern suburbs. It's great, and I'm sort of gradually filling in my, my river map of the area, of this lower section of the river roading and its tributaries. It feels special to add this to the list. I'll make a little playlist actually below of the walks along the tributaries of the roading that I've made, and maybe I'll add in the, well, there is a playlist of river roading walks as well. So as I always like to say, Thank you once again for joining me on this great walk. Thanks to Diamond Geezer for the instructions. That was amazing. Thanks also to my brilliant supporters on Patreon. It means the world to me, your support. It means the world to me that you watch these videos, all of you, and you like, and you subscribe, and you share, and, and or just some of you just, just watch them, right? And just think, oh, that was all right. That was okay. Anyway, so <laughs> that, I went on a bit then. Um, it's the rivers. It's the rivers get into you. It makes you feel kind of, it elevates your soul and your spirits. I'm doing it again, aren't I? Look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. No idea. Have a great week. Take care. Thanks again. <laughs>